and travel trying to sleep I'm counting sheep but running out It's time to expire Still I try No rest for cross tops in my mind Well, I don't see what the big deal it is. It's not like we're in the middle of a global pandemic and the state's on fire and the country's about to tear itself apart. Authoritarianism is rising all over the world. Uh, the economy's in the toilet. Glaciers are melting on both ice caps. And TikTok is showing a suicide video that they won't take down. What's happening? All of that's happening. All at once. Hold on a second. Everything's going to be fine, students. I promise. Copy box, get us started. Okay, Econ, we got a pretty vocab heavy day today, and we're going to culminate that with a little bit of math. Everybody's favorite vocab and math. Hold your applause. Okay, let's start off with some quick vocab. And these are very important concepts that I'll just refer to as the vocab term moving forward in this class with the understanding that you'll know what it is moving forward. So in economics, we have very strict timelines, very strict variables. There is something in economics known as the short run, and there's something in economics known as the long run. So the short run is any period of production that allows producers to change only the amount of the variable input into production, which is a really ugly economics way of saying Ford hires 300 workers for that season. That's the short term. One key thing you need to know about economics is the short term is anything that is less than two years. So less than two years is the short term or short run in economics. The long run is two years and a day and anything beyond that, that's the long run in economics. So what would be an example? Well, Ford builds a new factory that's gonna last 30 years. So these 300 employees in the short run, they could be laid off the next year. That's one calendar year. That's short run in economics. But if Ford build, builds a brand new factory, that's supposed to last 30 years, and that is a long run investment. So it's important to understand the difference between short run and long run in economics because that's going to apply to our terms for recession and depression as well. Now we're building up today to one of the few microeconomic concepts that we're going to learn in this class. Keep in mind this is a macroeconomic class. We touch on micro a little bit, and micro would be how you fit in the macro economy or how your business or your firm or your corporation fit within the macro economy, the big picture. Now, as we build up to the marginal analysis, which is our microeconomic concept of the day, we have to build in the vocab and the way and the process of doing the math to determine what is the perfect amount of output for your business. So let's start with some key concepts here. Number one, raw materials. For instance, the amount of raw materials that go into making the iPhone, you've got plastics, you've got glass hybrids, you've got technology, you've got rare earth minerals and, and rare earth metals, and all of these things go into this iPhone. And the amount of countries that participate in supplying one piece to this iPhone is over 60 countries. So raw materials coming from all over to make the final product of the iPhone. So these are unprocessed natural goods that you can be used in the production process. Now, total product, that one's an easy one. If I'm a company, how many things did I make that day, whether it be goods or services? How many things did I make that week? How many things did I make that month? that quarter, that year, two years, five years, 10 years, etc. How much did you make of that good and service in the time frame that you picked out? That's total product, which means total output. Now marginal, remember that word. That word always means what? One extra in input, one extra output, right? So if you've got marginal product, you have one extra input to make the product, or one output that's extra because of the amount you put into the production process. So the, it's the extra output or change in the total product caused by an additional one more variable unit. Could be another employee, could be another factory, could be another hour of business that you stay open. This would be marginal product is producing that one more good or service of what it takes to do so. Now, you gotta put these things through stages of production. 
You don't just put it in a room and then it magically turns into a desk or an iPhone or a car. You have to put it through these stages. Now, the stages of production have increasing returns, diminishing returns, sometimes negative returns that are based on the way the marginal product changes as the variable of labor changes. That's a big, ugly economic way of saying, we need to make a decision. Do I stay open for an extra hour? Would that be profitable? Do I hire one more employee? Is that going to make me profitable? Do I open my hours of business one hour early? Is that going to make me profitable? These are all the decisions in the stages of production. So our next vocab terms are very important as well. The first one is diminishing returns. Keep in mind, diminishing doesn't mean negative. It just means you're not getting as much back with the next input or the next output. So this is the stage where the output increases at a diminishing rate as more units of a variable are input. But does that mean you should stop making that product? The answer is no. As long as you continue to turn a profit, then you should continue to turn out that good or service. So even if it has diminishing returns, you still are going to make those goods and services because you can still sell those for a profit. It just won't be as profitable. Think about how Costco operates, right? Costco bulk items everything together and gives you a cheaper price for it, but you have to buy 36 chimichangas instead of one chimichanga to get that discounted price. So they have a diminishing return, but by selling in volume and selling in bulk, they're actually increasing the profit margin because they have become the store of buying large quantities of goods and services, especially for families. So that's how Costco operates. Now a fixed cost. Here's something I want you to think about. Fixed cost and overhead are the same thing. So I'm always gonna get animated so you can remember it. You can see my pit sweat there. So overhead and fixed costs are the same. So what is a fixed cost? If you own a business and you have to pay rent down between Lindero and Canaan and you wanna go on vacation, guess what you still gotta pay? You still gotta pay rent. You still gotta pay your employees uh, medical expenses. You still gotta pay for electricity to keep the refrigerator on. You still gotta pay for property tax. You still gotta pay for all these things. So your fixed costs or your overhead are things that are costs even when you're not producing anything. So when you're producing zero units, that cost that still remains, that's your fixed cost. That's your overhead. Those two things are the same. So commit those to memory because I'll go back and forth as referring to those in different ways. Now a variable cost is just like it sounds. It varies. This is a cost that changes when the business rate of operation or the output changes. So let's say oil gets more expensive. That's going to be a variable cost. Let's say water is more expensive or electricity is more expensive, or you're going to hire an extra employee or you're going to let them work for an extra hour or you're going to pay them overtime. These are all variable costs that can change week to week, month to month, year to year. And then finally, your total cost is going to be an addition problem. The sum of your fixed costs, remember your overhead, when you're not making anything, take those costs and then all of the other costs that go along with it, the variable costs, and you add those two numbers together and that gets you total cost. There's that word again, marginal economics always means one extra input or one extra output. Therefore, marginal cost would be the extra cost incurred when a business produces one additional unit of a good or a service. So marginal always means that same thing in economics. That's going to make it much easier in this class. And you just always remember what marginal means, always remember what utility means. And then when it's put in front of a word, then you're in good shape. Now, e-commerce. Clearly you guys know what e-commerce is. It's electronic business exchanged and conducted over the internet. It is now the number one way of doing business in the United States as far as revenue goes. And Amazon would be leading the charge behind that, obviously. Now, the opposite of e-commerce, and here's a term I want you to write down on your notes, brick and mortar. Brick and mortar means a tangible store that you go to. You get in your car, or you walk there, or you ride your bike there, you go, you go into the doors, and you buy something from an in-person store. We call that brick and mortar. Brick and mortar was the way business was done all the way until very recently, and then with Amazon, and Walmart being online, as well as being a brick and mortar store, and a number of delivery services, that is now inverted, and now e-commerce out uh, revenues that of brick and mortar stores. And you can see, especially in the middle of COVID, places like Macy's and JCPenney and all these big giant stores that used to be in the mall and very successful, 
those stores are in big trouble because of e-commerce. Now, total revenue. Here's something I want to be very clear about. Revenue does not mean profit. If I tell you that a business had $500 million of revenue last year, have I told you if that's a successful business or not? The answer is no. Because if they have $500 million of revenue, but they have $1.5 billion in expenses, then that company is in big trouble and most likely be insolvent and will have to declare bankruptcy. So total revenue is the number of units sold or goods or services multiplied by the average price of that unit. Not that difficult. Now marginal revenue, marginal, here we are again, that means you sold one extra item. So marginal revenue would be how much money, revenue, did I make by selling one more good or service? This brings us to our last vocab slide before we get into a little bit of simple math. The math won't be the complicated part. It will be remembering the steps and the process of doing marginal analysis. And we're going to do a very simplified version of marginal analysis. But if this is something you choose as a career path, it is a very lucrative career path if you know what you're doing. Now we're going to be very simple today. And we're going to be talking about one good or service. Imagine what the decisions have to be made at the corporate level for grocery stores, right? They have hundreds of thousands of products there. Some sell better than others, and the store has to decide, how are we going to sell these goods? Where are we going to put them on the shelves? Where are they going to be located on the store? Etc. All of this is marginal analysis. So what is marginal analysis? It's a type of cost-benefit decision-making that compares the extra benefits to the extra costs of an action. Now, the break-even point, this is very important. When you start a business on your own, you're usually having to front the money and then get some loans from investors or a bank, and then you are essentially working for free until you get to the point where you break even. Now, you're gonna pay yourself a salary, obviously, if you're owning your own business, but the break-even point is where the total output of the business breaks even with the total costs of the business. And if you're gonna get a loan from a bank, they're definitely going to want to know when they get their money back, which means when are you going to get to your break-even point. Now, finally, our last vocab term, profit maximizing quantity of output. That's a big, ugly economics way of saying, how much should I produce of this good or service? What is going to maximize my profits? So if I'm making $500 profit selling 10 items, and my profit goes to 450 selling 11 items, should I make that item? The answer is no. I'm going to be losing $50 if I make that extra item. So it is a misconception in economics and when you start a business, you should just produce as many goods or services as possible and then just try and sell them all. There's actually a way of being efficient by figuring out what your maximization of profit is and that's the number of goods and services you should produce. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my background here to some key definitions that we just laid out and also how you calculate this math and then we're going to go through the math all together.